YouTubers, Mike Martins here, Mike Martins channel. So, someone sent me a really good question the other day in the comment section asking, how do you make money running a game store? Well, let's go around, let's take a look, and I'll show you guys what I got going down. So I opened my store three years ago, and I got a silicone that the weather's getting warm. I didn't want to do it during the winter. I just got to kind of fold it up today. I got a ladder coming. And here it is. Uh, these are all the uh, last month's wave toys. These are the winter toys that I'm putting out here, the hockey and stuff. Uh, we're going into the whole, what do you call it, playoffs with hockey. So I'm moving some of the hockey stuff here. I have all the stuff from the Avengers movies. Huge puzzle section I had to restock this week. Believe it or not, I sell lots of puzzles go through this door. Then I have a Gundam section, which I'm restocking next month. Stuff has to come in from Japan. I already sold a um, Nintendo Switch this morning. And I sold a Game Gear this morning. I had two Game Gears. And, uh, yeah. So here it is. So, basically, I, I have a map here showing all the places of, where people have come from to visit me. Uh, I only put this up, like... The last week of summer last year, like not even last week of fall, it started getting cold and I put this up. It was a good idea. It was last week of summer. I can't remember, but it hasn't been up that long. But I moved some stuff around and put this here. And here are my gaming sleeves that sell really well. Uh, manga books sell really well. These sell like crazy. I, I, I'm, I'm, these like, I'm phenomenal, these gaming sleeves. Fireball Island Remake. This is the art, my RPG section, role playing. Here is my. Uh, starter boxes, beginner box for Pathfinder, uh, Shadowrun, and I got a couple other ones here I'm going to show you guys. Comic book section does really well. I sell anywhere from two to six comics a day. People come in and buy back issues and collection. I moved all the toys. I'm going to condense these toys here, my Rick and Morty stuff. I'm going to move it here, Deadpool stuff, because I got all the new Fortnite stuff that came in. So I'm going to move all the Fortnite. So this is a this is my typical order for the week right here. All this stuff here, all these board games, I restock from what I sold that they have in stock. Because a lot of stuff ends up going on back order. New uh, role-playing game for Star Trek. Uh, tubes uh, tubes for uh, playmats. People like playmats to play on. These are the new relic tokens that come out this week. Uh, Mega Man sleeves. All kinds of stuff. And my board game selection is one of, probably one of the biggest selections. Pop figs. Pop figs, no. Not the biggest in pop figs. But in board games... Decent selection for Gundams. And how do I make it work, guys? That's the question. Well, I'm going to tell you what the main key is, the main driving force of this business. One is I own everything in here. I even own the furniture. I own everything, all the metal grids, all the shelving, everything in this building I own. The only thing that stays in this building when I leave is just the four walls. I even own the doors. But... And I got into the video games. So what I did was there was a void in town. People wanted video games. Well, I never really did video games when I was on the coast. And I started. I started buying collections at fair market value. Paying more than what e way more than what EB Games was offering. And I had a thing going on saying I'll pay double what EB offers. And people were bringing in games like crazy. And they still do today. And I'm always up to date with all the new magic sets and all the new Yu-Gi-Oh! And all the new Pokemon that comes out. The Pokemon section here. So one of the main keys is to actually own all your product. When I first opened my game store, like 13, 14 years ago on the coast, my store was as big as a closet. And I only ordered what I sold or what I, what I could afford to get in. But I only modeled my store around what customers wanted. I never modeled my store around what I wanted because sometimes what I want isn't what everybody else wants. So what did I start doing? I started bringing in a few board games, the more popular selling board games to see if they sold. And this was 13, 14 years ago, 14 years this summer. And that started to sell. So I started to sell everything that I brought in and restocking. And then I, with the extra profit I made, I would reinvest into more board games. And I would ask people what games they want to see in the store. And we do weekly polls and we do all kinds of stuff. And then Magic hit the scene like four, 13, 12 years ago, and people wanted to see more Magic. So we did that. And it took off. And then uh, the profits were very marginal on Magic, so it was something to get people in the store. So when you get people in the store, what do you sell them? Binders, deck boxes, sleeves, uh, play mats. This is what you start selling to people. And then I started getting a board game crowd in. Tabletop miniature crowd, playing War Machine. So... 
It's about building. So I, I've gained the experience on the coast for having my store there for 12, 13 years or 12 years. 13, man, it's been so many years I've been down at the coast. And what happened? I grew. I flourished. Now I secured cheap rent. That Mind you, the building I'm in is falling apart. But I had a good time renovating it. I'll leave a link at the end of this, of this little um, vlog here called um, Building a Game Store from Scratch. New D&D fix came in this week uh, to paint. These are paintable. They're already primered, ready to paint. Uh, Fortnite toys, tons of Fortnite toys. Uh, restock on the board games they had in stock. They had nothing in stock. I sold quite a few games last week. All your dice, uh, sorry, deck boxes, play mats, relic tokens. Oh, that's, not to forget all the new Yu-Gi-Oh! booster boxes came out. That's another big one that came out this week. And then I just added here... Rotate the stock for the Yu-Gi-Oh! Same thing with the Pokemon. Rotate the stock. I have original Atari games sealed in the box. Systems. All kinds of cool, cool stuff here. Huge selection in video games that I've been buying and trading with people. And I've been doing very well, guys. It's The first year was kind of slow. Second year got better. And now this year, I'm just on fire. This morning, like, I sold three Star Wars Gundams this morning. Gone. A Millennium Falcon. And one of the slave ships and one ATT, uh, one of the AT, 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 but not that one. It was another model that I sold this morning. And I'm running severely low on Gundams. I mean, I got, this is all I got left with Gundams is just this little section when this was all full of Gundams at one point. So puzzles I restocked. I got that back in. So I put back most of the puzzles that I sold. I moved all the other toys here, so I rotate through stocks, uh, stock continuously. Now, what do I do with eBay? Well, eBay, eBay's a little bit different. eBay, I have my eBay store that also is another source of income. Now, how does that work? It's very simple. The stuff that I could fit through a mail slot that doesn't require tracking and I could ship within North America and get away with a stamp is what I sell. Like booster individual booster packs. Uh, sleeves like this fit through a mail slot. I sell tons of these, but I keep those at home separate from the ones in the store because before I've had instances where I would sell um, something and forget to remove it from eBay, then it sells on eBay, and then I sold it in the store. That was a big no-no for me. So now I keep the two businesses separate under one corporation. So now everything that sells in here sells in here and is – put through and then everything that's sold at home is set, sold at home and it's same thing is put through under the one corporation under one the one umbrella that i have so there it is that's how i do it i do turn over quite a bit i do uh first year i was barely breaking even kind of chipping in some of my own money in and uh, i sold my, my my store on the coast for a pretty penny so i'm not worried and chipping in chipping in Second year, or when I got into the second year of business, I started realizing that I was starting to turn over a bit of profit. Quite a bit, actually. And now, now today, 2019, springtime, got my front door open. Beautiful. And you know what? This store pays for my gas at home, my, 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 my $500 gas bill, my electricity, my home insurance, my car insurance, Store makes enough to pay me, to pay me, sorry, to pay me separately to, 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 to cover my overhead at home and here, which is good. And next year, see, a lot of people want to open a store and overnight start making money. It doesn't work like that. You need to grind and you need to tailor your business or your store or whatever you're doing in retail in 2019 and 2020. You need to tailor it to what the people want. This is a small town. I live in a small town. And it was, and at first, it was really tough blending in with the people. It was really tough to prove myself to the people that I wasn't just some city guy that was going to come here and change things. And yeah, that's that. I wanted to show this to you guys. S to be successful, you got to start small, never go big. And even Max Kaiser said this never go into debt to go into business, ever. Ever. You won't make it. You cannot go into debt and pay VIG or juice, or interest, or whatever you want to call it, to the banks. And I've, hand to God, hand to God, and I'm, I'm grateful. I'm in no debt, no auto loans, no nothing. Uh, I mean, I have car insurance, but who doesn't that has a car, right? I have cell phone bill, who doesn't that has a phone, right? But, nonetheless, 
I am doing well. Thanks.